How you been finding work and doing the whole COVID? Obviously, <laughs> welcome to the club. Yeah. 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 Typically, my um, my routine is typically Monday to Wednesday working from home, mm. and then Thursday and Friday in the office. Okay. Anyway, and so not much changed yeah. other than the fact that I had to do all week. Yeah. But I think coming up to around March next. March last year, I was under so much pressure. So much pressure with work. I needed the break. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult sometimes when you can't take a break because everything else is still running. Yeah. And so if I took the break, I would be pulled back anyway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So when the whole world shut down, mm. that was perfect. Mm. God orchestrated it just for <laughs> just, me. Just for you. Just for so me. Michael, you deserve this, Mate, man. After all I work took six in. weeks off. Yeah. It was incredible. Um, and then we ended up having one of the busiest years we've had. Oh, for real? Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Did, did business cool. take a hit though? Like in terms of personally for you? So obviously I have the, I have the private jet charter company and the luxury car hire company. Mm. Nothing was happening with that. Yeah, in fact, with the private jet, we had more inquiries than we had, we had had the previous six months. But we just could that all the African it. ministers trying to yes. chop in between Literally, countries. Yeah. I had people wanting to ship <laughs> yeah. gold. They wanted to do all sorts of things. Yeah. We couldn't do any of that. Um, we couldn't do any of that because mm. literally ports were closed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, but I also have a TV distribution company. Um, so we license content to Sky Channel 5, all okay. the big networks throughout Africa, Mnet, um, Africa Magic, ETV, all the big networks throughout Africa and the Caribbean. And obviously there are more eyeballs at home. Yeah. And so um contracts literally quadrupled makes sense yeah so it, that was that was nice it, it, it definitely had these perks as well being in lockdown because what i realized something in terms of like my my algorithm and my numbers wise when it comes to the podcast yes so during the heat of the you know the pandemic my listeners went high absolutely and my, my channel was growing exponentially but then you know it was my own fault for not fully capitalizing on that yeah. because you know i had fatigue and yeah. other stuff that i was doing in yeah. relations to like work and Business wise, but there was a great opportunity there for people to make things happen during this period. That's so. when I launched the podcast. The yeah. podcast. Literally, um, I'd been preparing for a podcast. We we're getting ready to launch in the summertime. Mm. Um, and then, literally, this thing happened, and we we're like, you know what, let's put it out. Yeah. <laughs> and so we time. put it out. Yeah, we put yeah. it out, and it was very, it was a lot of fun. Mm. Um, it was, you know, it wasn't crazy numbers, but there were m multiple you know, kind of five-figure viewing yeah. figures per week, which was brilliant for a new podcast mm -hmm. that we just launched. Um, so, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Okay, so yeah. Too much fun. I had to I had to retract. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you seem to be glowing now. See, I saw on your Insta, you came from, you were, you were on holiday, weren't you, recently? Where was yeah, that, yeah, Miami yeah. or? I was in Cancun. Oh, amazing. Yeah, Mexico. Yeah. And yeah. the reason why I asked is because I wanted to know whether it was a holiday or retreat because I saw quite a lot of people that I'm, I'm aware of, quite yeah, a lot of notable yeah, yeah. Like affluent young black yeah, businessmen, yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know yeah. what I mean? And it was a sight to see. So I wanted to know: was yeah. that like a purposeful thing, or so, are they just your boys that you just so, naturally roll with? Well, naturally, I surround myself with people who are doing well. Mm. Um, and typically, every year, at least once or twice, we would have like a, a getaway, do a mastermind, and stuff like mm. that. So last year we were out in Mykonos. Um, this year we were out in Cancun, and we go literally to have fun, but to spend time with each other, find out what everybody's got going on in their lives. Mm how each other can be supportive of one another mm. and that sort of thing. And that that has probably been just having relationships like that and circles like that around me, I think has probably been one of the biggest advantages that I've had over the past decade, you know, just mm. intentionally networking and surrounding myself with people who are doing good stuff yeah. so that we can we can all um, feed off of each yeah. other. That, that's really true. I mean, the, the day that I have a, a couple of million in my account, I'm definitely going to give you a shout to join, the, <laughs> to join those trips. But yeah. as they say, your network is your net worth. And Absolutely. that is a very powerful tool because I recently, I was speaking to a um, professor who's based in the States um, a couple of weeks ago. And she was just telling me about dynastic um, wealth growing. And how like certain wealthy families, they don't necessarily go on holidays, they go on retreats with other wealthy families. And that's just to establish a relationship, Absolutely. continue those networks going. And in those retreats, they're not just out there, not just having fun, but they're having genuine meetings where minutes are taken on targets set and they have people that are accountable for each other. So having that circle is great. And for me, looking from an outsider is also inspirational because mm -hmm. I look at people as an inspiration based on 
you know what they're doing. It's not necessarily they don't necessarily have to be my friends, but I can I can grow and learn from what I see visually. Absolutely. And it doesn't always have to be like numbers and figures. It just has to be a bunch of black guys enjoying it. Absolutely. I'm like, yo, that could be me. That could be me and my boys. And I relate to that yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. by looking at that. So that was amazing to see. That yeah, was a beautiful yeah, yeah. sight. But um, one of the things that I think there's a lack of is enough of people like yourself and people like you know Dr. Tunde's and all the other mm. people that was with you on, on that holiday mm. in terms of being in the public eye and you know, giving that vision to the younger people that there are other avenues out there and that there are people that look like you that can make it in other avenues Absolutely. that don't necessarily involve you being in sports or, Absolutely. you know, criminality and stuff like that. Why, why do you think there's a lack of? It's a bunch of several things. I mean, just by, just from my personal perspective, being an entrepreneur, a young black entrepreneur from the UK mm. who has somewhat... Um, you know, my background was in television. I took a break from television 2013. I took my face off of television mm -hmm. um, 2013. And I have just enjoyed just being progressive behind the scenes mm -hmm. just because I didn't want to attract unnecessary attention. Okay. And um, just off of my experience over the last couple of years, now that I've somewhat been trying to put myself back on the radar and even even in terms of being you know putting out my inspirational content putting out the stuff that i put out there it has i have received certain some kind of attention mm. that i don't necessarily want really. <laughs> <So> <laughs> what is, that, is that people that ask and you know the, the unnecessary <laughs> ways that the negative it, it's not even so much <laughs> the, the public as much as it is you know the authorities you know that tend to because then you become a target right mm. and so i think have and so a lot of black people I tend to find um, a lot of young black people who are doing well just want to do well. I have some of my some of my wealthiest friends have probably three hundred followers <laughs> yeah, on social sure. media yeah. because they just don't want to put themselves out there like that. They just want to succeed and quietly enjoy their good life, and nobody really knows and cares about them. Um, and I, I see the benefit to that. But also at the same time, I'm one of those people who also really, 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 really feels the struggle of mm -hmm. young people coming up. You know, I think it hit me once when I met up with one of my mates a few years ago to go to the barbershop in Catford. And it was a Saturday. We were just, you know, we were just getting ready to go out or whatnot. We were dressed up smart in suits, whatnot. And there was a couple of, um, it, it, there was a couple of young kids in the uh, barbershop. And they were like, oh, wow, you go into a, you go into a wedding, you know. You've just seen black guys you dress see, up in suits yeah, and go into a wedding, yeah. right? And that really hit mm -hmm. on a deeper level for me because my thing has always been, yeah, you know, cool, do well, get out the hood mm -hmm. and do all of that stuff. That's all brilliant. But who's inspiring the hood? Like, yeah. what, who are, what pictures are they seeing? The, the only... The only, uh, the only s signs of success they're seeing are the drug dealers and the X6s and the things like that. That they're, That's about all they get to see. They don't get to see that there is a world beyond sports, entertainment, or drug dealing. Like, you can be a stockbroker. You can actually own a dental. <laughs> you can own you can own a, a dental clinic. You can own your own law firm. You can own... Th there, is, there are so many things that you can do as young black people. And I feel like... Of course, there there aren't enough examples, especially here in the UK, um, because most of us don't want to be seen. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a conundrum, really. Yeah. Um, you know, because the thing is, I I get it because one on one hand, you don't owe anybody anything. That's 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 the truth for the matter. Mm -hmm. So you you know you're not inclined to be out there if you don't want to be. But I, I always of the notion that you know if you come from somewhere, it's always good to go and give back. Whether that be you know through your knowledge or you know setting up something or doing something, there's always a prerogative there. But um, the the thing that I find is that nowadays, when it comes to signs of wealth, it's, I feel like within our community particularly, it always has to be shiny. Mm -hmm. Because I grew up in a heavily like Asian predominant like you know environment. I grew up in the East London. My best friends from Pakistan, mm -hmm. like you know, all my friends are like Asian. Majority of them are Asian. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the black ones. They I call them family. Sure, but most sure, of my yeah. actual close friends are Asians. And growing up, all my richest friends, if you was to see their dads on road, you think they're broke. Right. Like one guy, his dad was a butcher. He was always in like a dirty overall with right. like blood all over it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. other guy, they, they own like, you know, franchise of like cake shops. I'm sure you're even aware of the shop. And when you see him, he's always in like a purple polo t-shirt driving a Nissan. Right. 
but you know his account it's got endless zeros in it. But within our community, our signs of wealth has always seemed to be like shiny. So if you don't have anything shiny, no one's going to listen to what you have to say. And I find that to be a major conundrum and an issue within itself. Yeah. Because like, who are you to tell me when I can't see nothing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Whilst growing up, some of my boys, I can look at their families and I know what they're doing behind the yeah, scenes. I know yeah, what they're yeah. worth. I know what they're saying. And the community listens to Well, we're, we're, a, we're, a, we're a product of the hip-hop culture, isn't it? Yeah. Like, hip-hop is, is shiny. You weren't really... The, the, the more records you sold, the bigger your chains got and the shinier <laughs> they got, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so this is what kids are growing up seeing, right? If you ain't got the chains and you ain't got the bling bling, what, what did that song, Jay-Z and JD, they said, if you don't bling bling, I don't want it. <laughs> don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. and so the, the, the biggest issue that has come out of that, that sort of mindset and that sort of culture is the fact that You've got people out here looking successful, but aren't really being successful. They're they're trying to. They're more looking for the for the spoils of wealth as opposed to actually being wealthy. And that is one of the biggest plagues to our generation. It is the fact that you've got 20, 20, 21, 22, 23 year olds dating guys looking for looking for Birkin bags. As a, <laughs> you see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's and it's and it's a. It's a it, for me, that's a that's a pandemic. <laughs> no, it really <laughs> you know is. What I'm saying it's yeah. a it's a it's a huge. It, it's going to take a re a reprogramming of our mindset really to understand that actually it's not the shiny stuff that makes you wealthy. Mm-hmm. It is the infrastructure you've got behind you. It is the safety net you've been able to create for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I and look as a young entrepreneur coming up, I fell for the same stuff. Mm-hmm. I fell for it. Listen, I, when I, when I was in my twenties and I started making my first my first bit of pee. Mm-hmm. You know, I was there in the Lambos and the Bentleys yeah, and I was, I was doing all of that stuff. Yeah. It took me a good while to understand that actually, Mike, mm. this is this is costing me money. Yeah. I was wasting money on, I was buying watches and all of those good stuff. And look, do your thing. Yeah. That, that I, I feel a, per, a good balance is necessary, yeah. right? But I feel like in our culture today, it is certainly more one-sided, yeah. right? Where people are more interested in spending their money as opposed to investing their money yeah, for long term wealth, you know. Yeah. Uh, but your your story is quite intriguing in the sense that you know you made your first milli before you hit thirty, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. H- how does that come about? Like, what I want to know is, you know, there's people that set out to make a million. Like when you speak to a lot of young people now, it's like, I want to make a million. I want to make a million. I want to make a million. Like, there's no plan. Yeah. They potentially might not be doing anything whatsoever, yeah, but they're yeah. just talking about making a million. Yeah. Like, did you set out to, or was it a case of you know there was a whole bunch of like things that happened and occurred and then gradually you saw that you were developing into this guy. I I I mean I definitely set out to be wealthy. That mm. was that was part of my I, I dropped out of med school at the age of nineteen, right? Okay. And you know, my mum's actually visiting with me this weekend and yeah. she'll tell you she was petrified. She was yeah. angry. She well, you're gonna fill in like Listen <laughs> li- I'm listen, I'm African, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You are allowed to have one of five careers, right? Yeah. You can be a lawyer, doctor, accountant teacher, engineer, yeah. or a failure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally, right? Yeah. And I chose the failure route. Um, so that was interesting, um, but I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change anything about my journey. I set out, I, I, uh, I went into, um, I went into television where I had a television show. I was producing, presenting, um, and I was also managing artists on the side. Um, I think as time went on, the TV stuff, after doing it for about three years, it was becoming popular on Sky, mm. but I wasn't actually seeing money in my account. Mm. Um, and so I think after after about four years of doing it, I wanted to syndicate it globally, right? I wanted to have it on broadcast on, on channels outside of the UK. Mm. Um, so I literally contacted all the major distributors who distribute content in the UK and nobody would touch my stuff. Mm. So I picked up the phone, um, started making phone calls, uh, after three months, I got my first yes in Barbados, oh. uh, and then it went on TV in Jamaica. It went all throughout Africa, it, on 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 Mnet, African Magic, ETV South Africa. I was on Firesat One in Ghana. I was so by the end of 2012, I was in 60 countries, and that was that was when I started to see the first bit of money come out of that. Um, and for me, the next progression was I was already connected well at the point at that at that time within sort of the, the the entertainment industry enough to know that some of my friends were starting to produce movies as 
especially in America. Um, and I said, listen, I've got the infrastructure, the network already for it, so I can distribute your movie for you. Mm. Um, so we started distributing movies, and then we started doing Tyler Perry content, and then before oh. you know, yeah. um, I'd set up inadvertently a TV distribution company, which mm. I still have to this day, which is at the moment probably one of the biggest suppliers of black entertainment content in the world. Honestly. And so, yeah, that was essentially the journey that helped grow um, quickly within, I think within within three years of starting to do that, we we, we backed the first mil, the first mil yeah. in um, in sales and continued to grow from there. And then I, I just went, I started investing in other in other businesses, other businesses. As, as we grow, and then it just kind of goes from there. Oh, that's amazing, and and that's what tends to happen. I think one one thing that I tend to find having discussions with various people is that there, there tends to be a focus on what is the business that can make me the most money. Not knowing that pretty much, if you look globally, everything, and anything, anything can make you money. Listen, you see what I mean? I've got, I've, I've got a friend who has a recycling, recycling company mm. for cooking oil. Yeah. Right. So he goes to all of these restaurants. They have all of this oils left over, and he just collects it. And they pay him a pound. Yeah. They pay him a pound per, I don't know, per gallon or whatever it was, yeah. whatever it is, to 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 get rid of their cooking oil. Wow. And he's got somebody else paying him. Yeah. To take the cooking oil so that they can recycle so he's it. Eating from both ends. And so he's eating both, from both, both ends. ends. Of it, and yeah. then a couple of years ago, he set up a factory mm. on how to recycle this into various other stuff, wow. and he's making money from it yeah. from recycling oil. Yeah. You know, I've got people who've got construction companies and people who have bin collecting companies who are all multimillionaires. Yeah. You can become wealthy off of anything. Yeah. Really, it's just about dedicating yourself to something. Mm -hmm. That's the key. It's dedicating yourself to something. But if you dedicate yourself to anything and you follow the principles, there are principles that govern the acquisition of wealth. Mm -hmm. If you follow these principles in whatever field that you choose to apply yourself, you're likely to succeed. Yeah, you know? I've, that, that's actually great to hear because w one of the things that I find is that people that tend to chase the golden goose or the, 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 that, that product that's mm -hmm. going to make them the mill tend to just always chop and change. Yeah. They, they follow the tide. It's like, oh, what's popping today? Crypto. But by the time yeah. you bought crypto, <laughs> you know, the market is dead. Yeah. Or it's like, you know, or, or you don't know when to catch it because you're yeah. for, forever like Absolutely. chopping and changing, not knowing that, you know, it's a vital principle Absolutely. to stick to that in which Absolutely. you believe in, which is amazing. What is it about you that you thought like helped you in that journey? Like what was it about your mindset prior to you hitting it? Um, I'm a stubborn motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I just don't give up. Mm. I just don't give up. That's the one thing about me. Look, I have taken so many L's. Yeah. I have had so many um, losses. It's funny because I, I went. I was getting a barbersh. I was at the barbershop last week, and somebody asked me. They were like, you know, since you kind of started making P, have you ever been broke? And I said, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we were just talking about L's before we started. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I was having a conversation with one of my friends. Actually, I was like, listen, people will never understand. There are broke millionaires. You can be a multi-millionaire worth whatever yeah. and still have seasons where you're broke because you're over over leveraged or over invested or whatever. Um and so all of all of those all of those things happen. But I think as far as I I, I just have a persistent nature about me. Mm. I just don't give up. Yeah. Regardless of regardless of what it looks like, all of the signs may be there to say something isn't supposed to work out. But if I haven't, if I have the slightest inkling that it could work out, mm. I'm holding on to this for dear life. For dear life, yeah. You know? It's something I've noticed as well. Like speaking to a lot of like you know wealthy people, successful um, individuals, quote unquote, is that you know they're very, very stubborn. That is one thing. They're extremely stubborn. And, and I learned that. Uh, apart from that, I mean, I'll touch on the other stuff. But the stubborn side of things, I learned that the hard way. So one of my first like multimillionaires who I interviewed was um, Emmanuel Thomas. I think his name. Thompson, he's a um, he's a black farmer, so his products are everywhere, M and S, absolutely everywhere. And um, I remember him saying, you know, I need to get to his house for I don't know about eleven o'clock or something. And I got caught up in traffic, and then you know I called him just to say I might potentially be five minutes late. And he he said this interview might not be on. He goes, I gave you a specific time, and he's an elderly guy as well. So you know when you're older, he's like in his late seventies. Just say what's on your mind. He goes, I gave you a specific time. Now you're telling me you can't make that time. 
you know, it's not going to be on. So then I, I begged and pleaded with him and I told him, look, I'm, I'm usually a super punctual guy. Like, I usually get to places half an hour, 15 minutes beforehand. They say, no, you know, don't be tea. No black people timing. <laughs> so he, he allowed me to come through. And as I got there, he was extremely upset. And he goes, because I'm late, he's going to do another interview beforehand with the BBC before he goes ahead with my one. He's like, look, I'm very stubborn and I stick to what I say and I say what I stick yeah. to. And that's one of the key things that I've learned from speaking to people like that. And then also, the, you know, they seem to be very conscientious and like very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Like they're very self-aware. Like they know their surroundings. You know, they got sensitive spirits. They can read people. Absolutely. And they can sense people. So it's, it's these characters that you felt was... Discernment is, discernment is key. Mm. Discernment is key. Um, but I think that comes from, well, that comes from the acquisition of, the acquisition of knowledge, um, the application of knowledge, and just learning and, and growing up growing as you go along yeah. you know because as you as you continue to as you continue on the journey you start to see a lot of things mm. and any wise man as you continue to see a lot of things when you see certain things recurring you can almost gauge what's about to happen next yeah. and you take calculated risks mm. not just dumb risks yeah. if it looks like what i've experienced before mm. i am probably going to be a little bit more cautious yeah. right and so discernment is, is is key of course the intelligence comes as a part of it because you've got to acquire knowledge you've actually got to know what you're doing you've yeah, got to understand yeah. you know it doesn't mean you're going to under, you're, you're going to know everything about geography or bio or, or biology or chemistry but about your particular chosen field you're going to have to be an expert i believe in fully putting in the 10,000 hours becoming an expert in your field and which will highly increase your chances of being one of the best paid in said field. Yeah. You know what I mean? so, so from what you're saying, it's not necessarily that it's innately built in us, so we're not necessarily born with it, but it's something that we can acquire along the way. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a skill. Mm. And if it's a skill, it can be learned, mm. right? Some people have a certain hunger from very early on. I, I, you know, now when I look back on my life, I didn't actually clock until a lot, a lot later on. It was actually maybe a couple of years ago I clocked when... Um, when I was in high school, my dad had a uh, recording studio, right? He had a recording studio, and so he had all of these CD, you know, CD recordables and stuff like that. I used to take some to go to school to sell. Yeah. To, to the wannabe <laughs> yeah. rappers who were going to the studio. <laughs> now, I just now clocked, yeah. not very long ago. And so, yeah, I suppose certain traits will be sort of inbuilt in you from early. Um, but as you get older, <laughs> if you're aware of it you can develop it yeah most definitely um it's like wh when it comes to success is there like you know th there's the there's the argument or the discussion of whether it's, it's a destination or a journey like what is it for you like would you label yourself as in you, i mean your your terms of success might be on some, on a different level to yeah. someone else um so would you say it's a destination or is it a journey i mean it's definitely a, it's definitely a journey because it's never ending however there it's important to have milestones in place that's how you, you know, anything that doesn't get measured doesn't get managed, mm -hmm. right? And so you need to have specific milestones in place that will be able to govern your journey of success. It's not necessarily in comparison to the next person. Somebody's somebody's journey of success um, might be the acquisition of 100 million, mm -hmm. right? Somebody's might be a billion. Somebody's might be 10 million, mm -hmm. right? It is quite unique to your journey specifically, but you need to have milestones in place mm. that will mark certain um that will be able to because you need a trajectory you need to be able to say that i went from x to x in a specific period of time that for me is the ultimate definition of success it's being able to make um measurable progress in considerable time mm. right and so you need those milestones in place yeah. my 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 for me one of my things when i was growing up was to be able to retire my mom able to do for the, over the last five years Amazing. you know her full-time job is to look after my daughter when my mm. daughter's with me you know she's my, my, mm. my nanny for me it was be able to be able to en enjoy a certain life get get out of where i grew up and be into a certain environment where i'm comfortable it was to be able to travel as and when i when i when i please um it was to be able to have not to worry about my 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 living mm. you know what i mean and be able to look after the people who i care about around um, so those were those were the, uh, the 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 milestones for me when I was growing up. Until you have to set the next thing, mm. you know. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. Because the, the way that I look at success um, personally is like I, I feel currently the majority of people we live in like a state of like you know desperation. Like you know we're desperate to find money to pay the bills. We're desperate yeah. to find yeah. this yeah. to do that to do that. And you know what I spoke to someone in regards to this whole idea and the concept of like success. And and they were like the the point when they feel successful is when they didn't have to necessarily worry about their bills and taking care of their family. The rest was just a bonus. Yeah. Even though it came in abundance, yeah. it was like, oh wow, now I can actually breathe. Yeah. Because as humans, you know, we tend to forget that we're constantly in a state of stress. Like yeah. our minds are constantly like, you know, our bodies are always like this internally because we're we're thinking about the next. You Absolutely. Know, since we're hunter graduates, we're thinking about the next meal. Absolutely. Now we're thinking about the next. You know, Absolutely. The next meal in a different way. So. It's like that moment to me is like, you know, when I'm successful, when I can breathe yeah. as a human and re yeah. truly observe my environment. Yeah. Um, you talked about the principles earlier on, like you just briefly mentioned. What, what do you think the core principles are? For, for what success? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> like in terms of like the characteristics and principles required. I mean, <laughs> there are so many, there are so many to go through. I your, think your for top me, three, what would my top, top three, three, my top three would 100% be the acquisition of knowledge mm -hmm. in your chosen field, it is absolutely, it is, I find it atrocious when I speak to people who say they want to do X in said field and they don't know anything about it, mm -hmm. right? That's that's a that's an L from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's number one. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think for me, for hard work is important. Work ethic is important. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of people who contact me who want to do, work experience, who want to do X, who want to do whatever it is. And their work ethic is ridiculous. Like, especially right now, we have this generation, the, the cultural mindset is, yeah, I don't want to work for anybody. I don't like to be told what to do and yeah. you know, that side of thing. And it is very difficult to be able to be successful if you do not know how to submit to a certain degree to authority right because discipline is a huge part of it there um and a lot of people just don't have the, the the work ethic that comes along with it um you know when when we when when i started out i was doing some crazy hours and sometimes still do yeah. you know we were doing 14 15 hour days and i was getting paid 250 pounds a month wow. for it you know what i mean and so you have that that was like 80 hours a week mm. it's ridiculous right but but i did it quietly with no, and I felt no type of way about it because I knew what I was getting out of it. Yeah. It's very rare to find young people who have the same work ethic today, yeah. right? Um, so I would probably say if I had to put it, if I had to put it in percentages, I'd say your knowledge accounts for probably about twenty percent. Your work ethic counts for about twenty percent. Yeah. But your biggest thing for me is your environment. You know, yeah. who are you around? Who's shaping your frame of thinking? Because that will always be key. It is. It is when when people when people grow to success. It's never really about. It's never really about how hard you're working and all of those things. Those are those are those are cool. That 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 keeps that keeps the engine running, but it's about who you're around. If you're around five idiots, if you're around five <laughs> men, yeah, six, yeah, yeah. one hundred percent. Yeah. You know, I believe that in the next five years, we are all going to become a hybrid of the people that the five people that we spend the most amount of time with. Yeah. And if you're around some dumb if you're around some dumb people mm. um and people who don't have a solid plan for their life, chances are in five years you won't be much further than where you are right now. Yeah. And so your environment is key. Um and when I say your environment, it's not so much the area in which you live. It is who you're talking to. Who are you spending the most Shape amount of time? With? Absolutely. But that's an that's an extremely <laughs> tricky one because People find it hard to shake off friends, especially you know, especially younger people because they they're hanging around with them or they're, they're in sports clubs or whatever with them, and it's like, how do you go about like shaking your friends off, man, or, <laughs> or acquiring a new circle? Because that alone is difficult. I mean, I've I've managed to acquire a new set of. I mean, since I started podcasting, I've realized that my phone book is very different now. Right, right. In the sense that I mean, because I, I speak to various people from That's professors, right. doctors, to even you know major criminals and business personnel. Right, right, right. So, like, I've realized that I've got access to a lot of information and a lot of different types of people now. Um, I, 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 there's a mathematician who I know. He's, like, a really high-level mathematician, does work for, like, the 
you know, for the government and all sorts. And he, he added me to like this random group of people that talk about stuff I hardly understand. But I seem to get insight on various things now. Now, this is currency in a way. If I, if I, if, you know, if I maneuver myself Absolutely. correctly within this circle and I realize that as I'm gradually changing my, my, I'm not changing my surroundings, but as I'm gradually getting, you know, in, introduced to this new pool of individuals, it's changing my mindset. It's changing the way I talk, the way I think. That is your surrounding. I'm able to, you know, yeah. That is your surrounding. That is my surrounding, yeah, because yeah, I'm, I'm able to, you know, dissect these people's mindsets and I'm Absolutely. able to engage with them and take from them. Likewise, sitting here and even coming to your house today, I'm like, wow, I mean, I've already got to gain something just parking up and walk into your front doorstep. Right, you right. see what I mean? So it's the, the network is so valuable. It is but how do people break out of that? You just need to want it so badly, mm. right? Because when I left when I left college and when I left, um, when I left uni, when I dropped out of uni, I was around people who were, especially after college, I was around people who were very professionally driven. They wanted to become pharmacists and they wanted to become all of these. They, they, you know, they, the idea of dropping out of uni was even, it even came across as a big failure to them. I remember telling somebody I wanted to start this company and they were like, the world doesn't need another company like yours. There's already <laughs> yeah. so many of you. Yeah. So for me, I am quite, like I said earlier, I'm quite stubborn. I'm quite militant in my approach. I dropped everybody I knew, okay, including my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. One of, minute because of her mindset. Because of her mindset. Yeah. One minute we we'd been together for like two years mm. at the, at this point. Um, but I just woke up one day and I was like, nah, this is what's gonna run. I was like, listen, the the life that you have designed, yeah. in the the mind, the life that you have designed in your mind ahead is completely different to what I've designed in my mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. There's nothing wrong with what you've, you're planning to do. It's just not the direction I want to go. Mm. And so it was literally like that. I changed my number, ignored everybody, mm. and then was friendless. <laughs> right? yeah, for real. Um, and so you can start fresh then. Right. Slate, so yeah. essentially what I would do is I'd pick up my laptop, I'd go to our hotel hop. I'd go to hotels in Bassey or in Mayfair and whatnot, and I'd go and work from their, their spaces. I might have be able to afford... Um, you know, a couple of burger sliders and a can of Coke all day. Yeah. But I was around people. I would see people come in dressed in their suits, come do business meetings. I'd see their, you know, fancy cars pull up at, you know, give it to the show, give it to the uh, valet and do all of that stuff. And it was really, you know, growing up in Croydon, I hadn't really been exposed to that. Mm. You know, if we saw a Lamborghini or Rolls Royce on the road, it was a big deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But over here, there's six of them parked up. Right, it's the average car. Yeah. Right, the six of them parked up and they're sitting there laughing, doing whatever, and they'll come and sit beside me and be like, "Is you know, is the burger any good or whatever?" We'll start making conversation. I'll find out that he owns a carpet shop or mm. they do this or they do that, and so I literally did that for a very long time, um, and in the process, started having conversations with people, with stockbrokers, with people who in 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 um, in in fields that I didn't even know existed. existed yeah. Right. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and and the more you continue to do that, you'd you'd start to find that these people are normal human beings. Number one, and actually, you might start to see where you might be able to add value to these people's lives. Mm. Um, and that's what I just done. I just went and stalked, and then and then people who I wanted to get to know, I just started stalking them. Yeah. <laughs> Standard. Not in a creepy way, but yeah. I'd literally make my. I'd find out, especially with social media, I'd find out where the people that I want to get to know hang out. Yeah. Like it was it was. Um, it was quite crazy to the point, and this was even f years later on after I was already getting established, there was somebody, there was a big property developer I was looking to get a, um, connected with, and we had met a few times before, um, but we hadn't really been acquainted properly. I found out where he, where he went to the gym, um, which happened to be in Milton Keynes, mate. I booked a hotel for one night, oh, woke the up gym. the next day, I was <laughs> at David Lloyd's at 6 a.m. Yeah. And he happened to be there. Well, you caught up with him. I caught up with him then. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm very strategic in positioning myself and connecting with people that I want to I want to connect with. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's the key. I think the, the biggest one of the biggest exercises I did is I think in 2000 and I don't know, maybe something like 2011, 2012, I made a list of all of the areas of my life that I want in my life that I wanted to improve. Okay. So I wanted to be I'd never been to a gym a day in my life. Before two thousand and uh, before two thousand twelve, wow. 
mm-hmm. right? But I wanted to be, I wanted to be fit. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be around millionaires. I wanted to be around great fathers. I wanted to be around people who are good partners. I wanted to be around successful business people. I literally listed seven areas of my life that I wanted to improve. And I went out there and I stalked and made friends with people who were already flying in these areas. Mm-hmm. Made them my friends, hang around them, help whatever it was they wanted help with that I could supply, i will do it. Mm-hmm you know, for, for no charge, just so that I could cement the friendship. Yeah. And and that's literally how I changed my circle. Yeah. That's amazing, man, because it's, it's quite similar to how I'm currently working through the change of my circle, yeah. uh, circle via the podcast, for right, instance. Because right. um, one thing I realised as well is that, like, when you change your environment, one of the things that I realised is that in one particular environment that's not as affluent, there's a, there's a scarcity mindset that, you know, there's not enough, there's never enough. But then on the other side, they're like, whoa, there's there's loads. There's loads. <laughs> there's way Absolutely. more than you could ever imagine. Absolutely. And you know, it was in, it was incredible to find that because I was also of the mindset like, wait, there's not enough. And you know, I feel bad going and trying to take or make or make some because I feel like I'm always taking from somebody else if I'm making, wow. not knowing that there's an abundance out there. Absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest that's one of the biggest misconceptions mm-hmm. that we ever get. That there is never there is so much more. There is look. There is so much money in the world for every single human being in existence today to be a millionaire. Yeah. That's how much wealth there is in the world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the 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 issue is that is the issue is that mindset of it in and of itself. Because I'm a big um, I'm a big advocate of the law of attraction and things mm-hmm. like that. And I know that whatever it is that you continuously and perpetually think about, you bring about. And so if you're constantly thinking about lack, if you're constantly thinking about the not enoughness of the world, you are constantly going to attract that into your world. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what the world at at large is experiencing. It is just going to make itself visible in your world, Mm -hmm. right? Because that's that's the position that you have put yourself in. And that was quite, that was a big turning point for me as well because I had to make that transition mentally at, at one point. And when I made that transition, to be entirely honest, the activities that I was doing prior to that transition, that mental transformation, and after, wasn't that different. Mm. But my results were very different because the engine had changed now. The the powering force, Mm. the mindset had changed now. And so as a result of that, the outcome had started to change. What's your thoughts on like a mentorship? On like, mentorship, you know, did, did you have one yourself? Essential. The process. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Again, these this person that I was stalking from mm. the gym is somebody who I wanted to I want I wanted to um to be under uh, um in terms of mentorship. But sometimes when you approach people and say, "Look, I want you to mentor me," they're not as they're not yeah. as receptive yeah. because people really don't have the time all the time for it, right? Um, and so I just had to find out what it was that he wanted and needed in his life at that time in his business and position myself to be somebody who could provide that for him so I could get closer to him. In what that done is inadvertently, I'd started to spend a little bit more time than I usually would with this person. Mm-hmm. And I was asking all the questions and gleaning all the information that I could. And before he, before we realized it was a mentor-mentee relationship, <laughs> yeah. but I, I already knew what I wanted to achieve with that from the onset. Um, but having a mentor is literally the quickest way to be able to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve yeah. because they have already walked down the road. Um, and so they know all the red flags to, to avoid and all of that. Like we were talking earlier before we started filming, you took out a loan mm. um, for your business. I took out a loan for my business at the age of 18 and it was a big flop. Yeah. You know, now speaking to some of my mentees coming up, if they brought that up in conversation, I say that's a big no-no. Big no-no, yeah. And, it's, it, you know, it's going to set you back God knows how many years. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So mentorship is, is, is essential. Mm. Just being having the privilege of being able to sit under somebody who's walked down the path that you are now starting to embark on, prevents you from making the mistakes that they've already made and learned from it, which is essential because if me and my business partner at the time had someone who could tell us look this is not a good idea right we would not have made that decision that absolutely. we made but we went about doing it on our own accord you know absolutely one hype night but um th- there's two different types of motivation that i find in the journey to success from the people i've spoken to is one is the initial so initially there was something burning in you that wanted to get you 
from one position to the other. Yeah. And then there's also the, the after fact. It's like, okay, now I've reached a good state in life. How do you keep yourself motivated? So what, what were those two driving factors for you, the before and the after? Um, I think despite everything that yes there, there's always a starting point there's always a burning desire to be able to to be able to do something right I, I think that's important um especially because now a lot of the young people who i speak to who want to be successful they want to be somebody without essentially doing anything yeah. right and, and that's a that's a more difficult way to become successful yeah. you have to be able to put some value out into the world there has to be something that you can contribute to society, humanity, community, to be able to take you on that trajectory, on that path to building and acquiring wealth. Um, and then, yes, when you do reach a certain point, th I, I did reach a point where I was comfortable enough where I wasn't as motivated. Mm. I was just traveling, spending money, doing a lot of dumb yeah. shit. Yeah. And, you, and you will do that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you <laughs> that, that happens. Um, but I think that was probably because I was so, from the age of probably 19 to 25, I was so focused. I, I never even went to the club for the first time until I was 27. Oh, yeah. Right? So there was, I think when I reached a certain point in my sort of early, tw um, late 20s, there was so much that I hadn't had the chance to do that I just needed to get out of my system. I became a dad at the age of 23, started my first business at the age of 19, I was just locked in, yeah. right? I needed to do some dumb shit to get it out yeah, of my yeah, system. system. <laughs> um, and then I, I've kind of reached this point where I am around really wealthy people now, which really makes me very insignificant, mm -hmm. um, which makes me realize that actually it was cute yeah. <laughs> what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know in comparison. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. cute what I was doing earlier, mm -hmm. but there really is a next level of wealth to acquire and to be able to create an impact to be able to kickstart for you to yeah so that really humbled me mm. that really humbled me and realized that actually it's you know money is not houses and cars mm. you know i know people who own cities and building towns and yeah. doing stuff like that and and when you're around that kind of energy you just shut your mouth and you just get on with it yeah. so it's a new s form of motivation plus i'm also now at the stage in my life where Yes, the acquisition of wealth will always continue, but it's probably now for me about how much, how many more people I can impact mm. with that, um, with, with, with that knowledge and wealth and understanding. So it's, it's slightly different yeah. for me now. You know, yeah. I, I was speaking. It's, it's quite interesting about getting the kick up the arse, and I was speaking to Alfie. I don't know if you know being Alfie. Um, he's um, he's really wealthy, big young businessman as well, black guy from London, yeah. and. Um, he was saying that he, he reached the point where, you know, within his circle, he thought he was the guy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He had all the Ferraris, all the, all the drip, all the jewelry. And then he started hanging around, like, these Arabs and stuff. And um, he started feeling like he was poor and he was Absolutely. broke again. But um, instead of initially, before going back and using it as a fuel for motivation, he started doing some dumb stuff as well. He went and um, started, like, putting diamonds on his car keys and stuff <laughs> just to roll with them. Because <laughs> it was like he was spending, like, 80 grand per car key just to roll with these guys because the pressure that he felt and he yeah, felt yeah, so yeah, insignificant yeah. Yeah. that he felt that to even be in the room with these dudes. Yeah. But then he realized that they they knew what time it was. They knew he wasn't on their level. Absolutely. So that, that, that was kind of like the re-spark for him to be like, wait, hold on. This is some dumb shit I'm doing right Absolutely. now. Like, this is, you know, Absolutely. I should be motivated yeah, to then yeah, go, go to the next yeah. level if I truly want to go to the yeah, next yeah, level. Yeah. And that's what he did. So it was, yeah, it was yeah. good to kind of level up. And, and they know, and they know, look, they know that you're not quite there yet, but they see themselves in you mm. they see they recognize that they have been at that that point before where you are just on the trajectory and with a little bit of um a little bit of their influence and direction you can go on to the next yeah. onto the next level i'm i'm the youngest in my circle mm. have always been but feeling yeah. it more now yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but it's brilliant because these people are actually doing good shit and what that does is it really just makes you double down on 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 your effort and just and just gives you a different a second wind a second level of focus and i think and i think that will always happen you know initially your motivation will be trying to run away from hunger trying to run away from being broke and trying to run away from 
you know, the, the, the poverty that set you back from not being able to pay your bills and, and your life expenses. And then you get to that point where after you've got a couple of luxuries, you realize that actually it was never about what I, I, I don't need, like at this point in my life, I don't necessarily need anything really. I'm not, re I'm not even interested in another car or like I've been, I, I've been down, I've been downgraded and downsizing on my cars and, <laughs> yeah. and, and stuff because I just don't, I don't feel, I don't feel like I have anything further to prove. My ego does not need massaging in that way anymore. Um, what it is up to now is just being able to create a certain level of wealth that my daughter and my child, my, my grandchildren and great grandchildren mm. can be able to enjoy. But also, but also to be able to really make a huge impact yeah. in 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 society. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think once you start, once that shift happens you get a new, a second wind, yeah. you know. But you've got to be around the right people to be able to spark that. Most definitely. And I think the, the ego is one of the most dangerous things as well because w until you drop that, you're constantly, you know, doing things that might not You will be doing help. the dumbest stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. you'll be doing the dumbest stuff. I have some young friends who continue to do dumb stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I've done, I've done that. Yeah. You know, I, I remember there was one year I sat down with my accountant and I was like, crap. I have spent 150k just on clubs and doing yeah. dumb shit. Yeah. And at that point, I realized, you know what? This is yeah. too expensive. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. yeah, I've lost yeah. it. The, one, one thing I realized. So I've, I've had, I've spoken to a couple of billionaires on my podcast, mm. and one thing I realized is that when they reach a certain stage, you realize that there's zilch, like in terms of ego and mm. things like that. To them, it's all about the system now. So they've, they've even dropped the product. They're thinking, okay, I just need system after system Absolutely. after system. Absolutely, yes. There's nothing else to it. Because yes. Because now they've you know, they kind of gone over that. But um, one of the things that they battled with was like the whole misconception of money. The idea of money is like, you know, it's, 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 it's bad and it's evil. And I, I recently saw one of your videos. You were talking about some of the misconceptions growing up in regards to funds as well. Mm -hmm. That, you know, how the church made us perceive money parents perceived us yeah. growing money like how detrimental is that it is look everything starts internally mm. right the you don't become rich when you your first meal comes into your bank account or whatever that number might be for you you become rich the moment you make that mental decision that you know what i am a wealthy person mm. right everything starts internally and if you have an internal battle constantly <clears throat> that is saying that there is something wrong with money or that there is something wrong with its acquisition or that wealthy people are evil or that, or whatever those negative misconceptions might be, you will probably never be wealthy, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Because you haven't, there is, there is an internal blockage. Mm -hmm. You will never really be, look, I, I am a believer that <clears throat> you, your, your surroundings is a reflection of who you Right. If you know, when you become when you whatever you become internally, eventually it will it will exuberate into your physical external um, experience. Right. And if internally you are constantly battling with this idea of wealth and money and acquisition, you would never be able to settle in the fact that you are a wealthy or a, or a rich person. And that's OK. Right, and until you are able to sign on the dotted line and say, "and that's okay mm. with me," you would never really be able to manifest it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so for me, I, I saw, you know, I saw that mindset mindset shift at some point in my life. You know, when I was in my early twenties, where I'm like, you know what, I'm 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 trying to do this, but there is this internal programming that has all been embedded in me that says that. There is something wrong with doing this yeah. that I am, I don't know, denying God or whatever the f like, might be that yeah. you've been. You, like that every rich person's done something bad to get to where they got. To. Right. Like that's um, one that always. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And and I remember reading a book called How to Get Rich by um, Felix Dennis. He was a you know, he was a British publishing billionaire. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he said in the book that really stuck with me is that. Until you reach the point where you come to the conclusion that I am going to do it by any means necessary, mm -hmm. you will probably never do it. 
right? And that once you make that conclude, once you come to that conclusion, that's when who you are as a person really can surface, because that's when your moral characteristics will, will come into play to see how far you are really willing to push yeah. this thing. Because there are so many ways that you can acquire wealth, which will be legal, but sometimes immoral, yeah. right? And there are some ways that you can acquire wealth, which may be immoral, but legal. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's a, it, you just have to settle that first and foremost within yourself until you are able to reach that place within yourself internally where you understand that building wealth is okay. In fact, if you want to do good in the world, become wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? The, the yeah. You poverty can give can, more and do more. Poverty yeah. can't do nothing for anybody. Yeah. Right? You can give it all away if you want. But for me, the biggest, I feel like the person you become, the person I am becoming while I've been on this journey is my biggest asset. Right, because I have had to learn to do things in a certain way, had to learn certain skills, learn certain principles, mature, carry myself in a certain way so that when I walk into a room, I can get the respect that I need to be able to operate within that sector. And I love the person I'm becoming in the process. Yeah. You know, God forbid if I lost everything tomorrow, I have no doubt that I will be able to take it all right back yeah. because of the person I've become yeah. in the process. And so I think that's very essential. Um, to every to to everybody, I feel like everybody should make it their life goal mm. to become a millionaire, not just because of the money, but because of the person that you will become in the process. Yeah, that's amazing. That's just amazing thing to hear because I think what one of the battles that I had internally was always the idea of like wealth being as in like in order for me to acquire it, I have to do something bad to someone else. Mm. And you know, when, when you deep in, when you really think about, it, you realize that these are things that be embedded in you from young. It's like, you know, the, the concept that, you know... Partially to stop you from you know, from embarking on that process. From embarking on that process, yeah. It's kind of like gatekeeping. It's Absolutely. like, okay, let's let's keep the majority Absolutely. here working and, you know, forgetting about, like, what's, what the potential exactly. of the values are. Exactly. So that's that's crazy. And um, early on, you, you talked about, like, one of your biggest successes was, like, um, retiring your mom. Mm. Like, would you, what's one of your biggest L's? And what did you learn from that L? Like, what would you say is the, the L that really taught you Listen, I want to kick you off the arse so and you're like, you know, I'm not going to have this. So, uh, there's a few, mm. but I'll probably, I'll talk about this one because it went beyond business. Mm. Um, I had just done, so I, I've done a few, quite a number of lease option properties where I have taken over, I've taken control over properties without necessarily buying it. Um, so, that's essentially what lease options is. Mm. And I had a, I had a lease option on a property in in Kent, which was really good. I just decided not to rent it out. Mm -hmm. This was some somewhere that I was going to live with my family at the time. And what the 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 deal was structured in such a way that even though I was controlling the property, I was still paying for the mortgage of it through the person who owned it yeah. at the time. Right. And little did I know that he hadn't been paying the mortgage on the property. And this was something that I was living in mm -hmm. myself. Um, and I just got a knock on the door one Friday afternoon while having lunch the with bailiffs. my family. And it was the bailiffs. And I literally had half an hour oh. to pack up my bags and leave the property. With the whole family. The, the whole the family. Room. So this day, my daughter thought we went on holiday. <laughs> yeah, you're like pack up. We're going on the trip. We had we had yeah. to go and stay and find a travel lodge wow. or, or premier inn or whatever it was and yeah. stay there for six weeks yeah. while I found out as another property. Yeah. But that was a humongous lesson because just when I thought everything was starting to fall into place, yeah. it was a humongous. I essentially became homeless. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, my mom was crying like I've never seen before yeah. um, because we had all taken pride into this new home that we, we were enjoying. And um, yeah, that was a, that was a tough one. That was a big, a big lesson. That's a humbling experience. Very, it? very humbling experience. Yeah. You know, that regardless of where you are in life, things can change mm. very quickly. Of course, I'm very, I'm a lot more vigilant on how contracts work now. And I've got a strong legal team backing me, making sure that scenarios like that are unlikely to happen again in the future um but it was a big l it was yeah. a very big and I, it was a property i lost money on 
um, and all of that stuff. But you know, you live and you learn. You live and you learn, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Like the, that's one of the lessons in life. It's like L's, L's is what is, you know, how you want to take it. Because, yeah. you know, most people take L's and turn them into W's. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, to me, the loss is when you give up after that. One hundred percent. The thing. The moment you give up is when one one hundred percent. Look, my, I'm an I'm an African man, so I take pride in being a provider. I take pride in being able to look after my family and all of that. Business. Look, if anything happens with business and something falls apart in business, I can live with that. I can come back the next day and I can do it because I'll come home and I will relax, reset with my family. And um, with this one, it was affecting my family. Yeah. <laughs> so that's personal. So that, that, that was home, yeah. really personal. It attacked everything that I represented as the man that I thought I, I was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so that was a that was a, a deep one yeah. for me to to swallow. It took a it took a little minute for me to get my head back in the game mm. after after that one. But yeah, it it, it happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's all about the grind, stuff. Absolutely, Michael. I appreciate that, man. I've I've learned a lot already, like speaking to you in the short period of time that, that you know you've, you've given me, and I truly appreciate that. But um, as as a final giveaway, what's the what's some of the advice that you give, like you know, young up and coming entrepreneurs? Not even you know, I think I need to because I always say you know, young up coming entrepreneurs, but I don't think there's no age when it comes to entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's yeah. no young or old. So like, what advice would you give based on your experience to like entre- people that want to be entrepreneurial? Just people in general that are, you know, think that they necessarily might be struggling in life and want to come out or into a better place. Like, what would you say from all the experiences that you've gained in your journey? You know, I find it always, I, I, I find it funny whenever anybody asks Ask me that, that question because yeah. it's, sort of, it's such an open ended question. Is, yeah. And it but varies, you know, depending on the individual. Absolutely. As well. But, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like, especially even with this journey of entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. right? This, this even term of entrepreneurship, look, entrepreneurship is overrated, <laughs> right? Being a businessman is overrated. I still, there are still people who are entrepreneurs who are doing well within a ninety-five business company system and things like that. So, my biggest takeaway is don't follow the herd. Don't follow the herd just because something is trending at a certain point in time doesn't mean it's the thing that you have to. You have to put your your eggs, your, your, all your eggs into whatever, whatever journey, whatever goals that it is that you've set for yourself, whether that is becoming something in the professional field or whether, even if, even if that is entrepreneurship or whatever it might be, stick to your truth. I think that's the most important thing for me. Stick to your truth, but also whatever you're going through right now, man, it doesn't last forever, man. Yeah. Things change. And that's one of the, that's one of the biggest things that I have learned in my life, man. Things change. I never take things overly personal in the moment anymore because I realize that you know what tomorrow things could be different, uh, and so keep keep hoping, keep believing, keep the faith, keep working, keep the dream alive. And listen, if you don't stop, you'll, you'll find it. Yeah. You know, it's as simple as that. That's it, Michael. Truly appreciate that, man. Pleasure. Thank you Pleasure. for inviting me to your home. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. I truly appreciate Pleasure's it. It's mine. It's, it's been it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm from you, especially since we're both Ghanaian as well. I know, right? Shanti, I know, I know. I'm a Shanti. Oh, you're Shanti. Yeah. Say no more, man. I'm straight up a Shanti as well. So it's an absolute pleasure, and I love seeing like you know, the, you know, I love seeing my people win. I love, Absolutely. especially I love seeing the brothers win because to me, like whenever I see stuff like that online, it's like it brings a certain level of joy inside of me. I feel like I've won. Yes. So it's yes, like yes, you know, yes. that's what I'm another saying. one, another, <laughs> another one. one. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. the way I see it, and I think. We need more of that. And that's why I'm, I'm always keen to speak to people like yourself because there's a sense of joy that I get seeing you win that I think, you know, c- should be reciprocated across the community. Because, you know, if we look at it on a major scale, we are at the bottom of a lot of things. So, you know, it's up to us to like, you know. And it's, a, and it's a powerful thing. You know, it's a powerful thing for what it does to other people's minds mm-hmm. because everyone can believe that, yeah, it, it's easy for me to believe that, yeah, maybe, you know, it's possible possible some people can do it but it's something about seeing yourself in somebody else that makes it personal that actually it's possible for me do you know what i mean and that's a that's a that's a really important element in it so yeah i, I love to see it i love to see it amazing thank you, thank you again man appreciate it man